Well, Monster Truck fans, we've caught up with Dave Radziras, driver of the only diesel monster truck, the Air Dog Monster Truck. Now, Dave, how did you get into the sport of monster trucks? Uh, I was actually pretty heavily involved in truck pulling, and uh, I had some sponsors in truck pulling that this figure. I ran the idea of building a monster truck by them, and they kind of jumped on board. I didn't hear nothing for about six months, and all of a sudden I got a call to build a monster truck, and that's where we're at. Now, Dave, last time you were out uh, in Springfield, Missouri, uh, things didn't get off to quite the start you were looking for, and you ended up on your lid uh, in, a, in spectacular fashion. Uh, what did it take to get it back together? Well, first off, I'm going to comment on the... Uh, not quite happening the way I wanted it to. Uh, I thought it was pretty awesome. It's a shame it was first hit, but it was wicked, and I think a lot of other people thought that. So, you get, you know, it's a glass half empty or it's a half full. It was a good thing, you know. Um, what it took, though, getting back into this is what it took was I had I ended up having eight days to put the truck back together. Uh, by the time I got home from Springfield, it's only me and Michelle working on the truck, and uh, it involved a lot of body body work, uh, some chassis work, uh, fuel cell. It was pretty involved. It was a lot of damage in Springfield. Um, but we got it done. We got it wrapped. Uh, Steel Skins wrapped it on Thursday night here in, in Lima. And uh, we're ready to rock Lima. And you never tell that eight days ago it was on its lid. It, it looked it looks very good here today. Um, you got to make your first freestyle pass here in Lima. Uh, last night, and you, you came out first, which is always a, a pressure situation. Uh, you got to really set the tone, but you came out, and you not only set the tone, you got straight after it. I mean, you were uh, attacking everything. Tell us about uh, last night. Well, you know, I sat here since Thursday, and we have a few gentlemen down here. We got Alan Pizzo and Dan Runte, and a few guys that were uh, have been after me quite a bit since that little mishap in Missouri and I've been getting ribbed all week about it so yeah I would say I went out there with something to prove I was after it unfortunately I blew an intercooler boot um, and didn't get get as far along as I wanted to but yeah I went out with an attitude definitely I wanted to show them I can hang with the boys well, we'll be looking forward to uh, your displays this afternoon, if, if last night was any uh, indication of what to expect. Now, now something else that has really uh, come to, to knowledge with the diesel, there, there's an issue with uh, some, some safety. You can't run a typical RII, and I understand that you've uh, uh, worked out a, a solution to that issue that seems to be working pretty well. Why don't you give us the basics, and then we'll go up in the truck, and you can show us uh, kind of how it works. Well, you're right. This has been an ongoing issue due to the fact we don't run an ignition, so we're, we're uh, working on the best method of shutting them down. With a diesel, you almost have to go back to shutting it off with air. The engine can run away on crankcase oil, so we need to stop the air. You stop the air, the engine shuts off no matter what it's running on. Uh, I've gotten heavily involved with MTRA. Uh, the guys at MTRA... Uh, We've all been putting a lot of thought in this, and we now just come up with a new uh, solution to shutting this off, an in, inline solution. Uh, I can reset it from in the driver's compartment, nobody out by the truck. Um, and in Missouri, uh, we got to test it out under real conditions. So we're, we're now getting beyond the actual testing this is true, real world. What happens if the truck's upside down? Will it shut off? And uh, we're, unfortunately, I'm the guy proving it, but we're proving that theory that it does work. Well, what do you say we uh, climb up into the uh, back engine bay and uh, you can show us kind of how it works? Absolutely. Well, we're up in the engine compartment of the Air Dog diesel monster truck, and Dave's going to show us their safety shutoff system. Thank you. What we're, what we're doing here is uh, we originally started with a guillotine at the end of the turbo over in this area right in, right behind the air, in between the air take and the air cleaner. Uh, we learned in Springfield, Missouri, obviously everyone knows I went out my lid. 
uh, we were running both setups. We were running a guillotine and we were running this new inline setup. This is a butterfly in inline and it's similar to a funny car, the, the butterflies you would see in the scoop of a funny car. That is now in an in, in inline position. From remote, when that's shut off, that'll click closed and block, completely block this off and kill the engine of air. By doing so, it'll stop the engine from running away with crankcase oil or any other means of running away as a diesel can do. We learned in Springfield that that guillotine at the end of the turbo will get knocked off when your body crunches. Uh, so we pretty much completely did away with that due to the fact that we had to go to our auxiliary setup we had been testing, which is now our primary setup. Uh, there's many hours and hours of thought in this process. Um, now some real world testing. Hope I don't have to test it too much more, but real world testing. We're working with guys like um, Marty Graza, Mike Vauders, Tim Hall, all these guys are putting a ton of thought into it. MTRA is a huge part of this, uh, trying to get this resolved, and, and that's one of our big issues. Right now, with, with the testing we've done and the accidents we've had, we learned that this truly is working. It is a reliable source of shutting a diesel engine down. And uh, looks like we'll be writing some rules soon for it. It's, it's definitely moving forward. Well, fans, the Jamboree is, is a great place to catch up with a, a lot of old school faces. Um, and so we've caught up with none other than Jerry Richmond. Now, Jerry, you've been out of the sport for quite a while now. What have you been up to? Oh, where do I begin? Uh, for, for the last 17 years, uh, I was a Snap-on tool franchise owner. And uh, I've recently left that uh, after 17 great years. And uh, now I own a carpet cleaning company and a trailer sales. All right. Um, now, let, let's go through your uh, resume here. You, you, you've had first the Terminator, and then you, you had uh, Lethal Weapon and uh, Weapon One. Um, and you, you had a, a stint in Barefoot. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, you, you, you had a, uh, some work in with Overkill and Marty Garza. Um, am, are we missing anything? No, uh, I, I, think, I think you got it all handled there. Uh, the, actually, the, the last two overkill trucks, uh, the maximum overkill and the extreme overkill, were, were built in my shop, and I actually piloted them for, for uh, about a three-year period uh, for Marty Garza. And I also, uh, I also built a couple of the Nightmare trucks and a bunch of components for other fellas that were, that were in the industry. So now, that's, that's quite a line of trucks. Uh, do you have any one particular truck that's particularly a sentimental favorite? Uh, it's probably my old original. It's probably the Terminator uh, Monster Bronco. Uh, nobody told me when I built it that short wheelbase wasn't good. So, uh, you know, the pictures that have circulated over the years, it was always uh, nose high in the air. But it was a real blast to drive, and uh, it was also my street truck. It started out at the Jamboree in 1982 at the Marion County Fairgrounds. Wow, wow. Um, as we can see behind us, uh, Jeff Cooks put together an old school rig that he started years and years ago. And uh, one Mr. Alan Pizzo has a restored Predator 1 out there. Uh, any chances of seeing a restored Terminator? Well, I don't know. Jeff Cooks beating on me pretty hard. But what you got to understand, Jeff Cooks crazy. So, you know, I'm not as crazy and, and, and mentally incompetent as my friend Jeff, so, but, but who knows? I don't know. We're pretty good friends, so uh, it could rub off. They call him Wild Man Jeff for a reason. So, uh, so Jerry, you've been out of the sport. Do you miss it at all? Oh, of course. When you, when you hear the trucks fire up, I've always been very competitive. Uh, when you hear the trucks fire up, uh, I certainly miss it, and... Uh, you know, you'd like to say uh, you'd like to belt in maybe one last time and and uh, and go go side by side racing. Racing was my favorite. Freestyle was also a blast. But you know, I'm very competitive. I, I love the racing part. Well, Jerry, we'd like to thank you for your time and hope you enjoy your time at the Jamboree. And we'll catch up with you uh, at a later time. Take care until then. Thank you so much.